Don't adjust your phone screen. There's nothing wrong with the plane you are witnessing. It's just very flat. This, my esteemed viewers, is none other than the Vought Flying Pancake, an aircraft made for one very simple mission, to fly as humanely slow as possible and take off from the smallest runway ever conceived, less than 200 feet. In a world without VTOL aircraft, this cutting edge design might have changed the way we fly and the way World War II was won. Let's jump into one of the strangest aircraft to ever grace the skies. High speed is not everything in aviation. Sometimes the need is for something other than having an aircraft that travels very fast. Speed might be sacrificed so that the plane can carry more cargo or payloads, or if an aircraft needs to fly longer distances more economically. Another reason why lower speed may be preferable is for when an aircraft needs to fly low and slow. The latter reason for a low-speed military aircraft concept was the primary driving force behind the aircraft that we'll be covering in this video. The Vought V173 was designed not only to fly at a low speed, but at a snail's pace. And the thinking behind its design by one of the most innovative aircraft designers of the time was for a wing design with an extremely low aspect ratio. That design ethos created an aircraft that was as flat as it was roundish in shape. The result was what many thought looked like a giant flapjack or a pancake flying through the sky, hence the quirky name, the Flying Pancake. So what went into making the Vought V173 or Flying Pancake? Speaking of pancakes, if you want to get something naughty and sweet for yourself, then you need to check out our video sponsor, Adam and Eve. Simply go to adamandeve.com and use the code FOUND and get up to 50% off your first item and free shipping in USA and Canada. Now, if you ask me, that's a pretty sweet deal. Thanks and back to the show. The 173 was an aircraft built during World War II. As already mentioned, central to the proof of concept for this craft was an extremely low aspect ratio wing design. This created an aircraft that was essentially one giant flat shaped wing, hence its pancake-like appearance. Its most eye-catching and unique feature was its circular wing, which was relatively small at 23.3 feet or 7.1 meters in diameter. This small wing area was meant to provide structural strength and allow the craft to have a high level of maneuverability at low speeds. This design was actually created by the NACA, which was the precursor to NASA and stood for the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics. This essential result was a mathematically precise form of soft camber lid contouring. In theory, this type of airfoil allowed for a constant, unaltered airflow over the surface, allowing the plane to fly slower with more control. A huge three-bladed wooden propeller was to be mounted at the tip of each foil on each side. These twin giant propellers would ensure that the entire aircraft was covered in a constant slipstream of air, thereby maximizing its aerodynamic performance in conjunction with the NACA airfoil. These prop rotors were powered by a pair of air-cooled Continental A80 radial engines capable of a very modest 80 horsepower. Yeah, that's pretty low, but we'll get to that in a moment. The two four-cylinder piston engines would be housed within a fuselage on either side of the cockpit and just above the landing struts, with the wing, which was effectively also the fuselage, had a complex structure that consisted of two horizontal stabilizers, two rudders, and two large elevators right at the midpoint of the fuselage. Once again, this was all designed in order to achieve maximum aerodynamic lift and flow. 
This high angle off the ground meant that clearance was provided for the large propellers. It also enabled a short takeoff as lift could be quickly generated due to the high angle of the wing area in relation to the prevailing airflow. As such, a big plus of the V173 was its ability to take off within 200 feet, as which would be essential aboard most ships with limited runway space. Another plus was that it could also take off vertically into a 25 knot wind. So not technically a VTOL, but on some days it definitely acted like one. Due to its round, flat design, the V173 had a tall undercarriage that gave it a ground angle of 22 degrees, meaning that the pilot could actually enter the cockpit via a portable ladder underneath the fuselage. But this high angle also meant that the forward visibility was almost non-existent until the craft fully lifted from the runway, which you can imagine was a problem on the short stubby decks of an aircraft carrier. And who was the man behind this unique, even revolutionary plane design that was so heavily dependent on precise aerodynamic principles? Wow, none other than Charles H. Zinnemann. Charles Zinnemann is central to the entire story of the Vought V-173. Kansas-born Zinnemann was an aeronautical engineer who made a career out of researching aircraft stability and loads, as well as, critically for the Vought 173, the design of the airfoils. Zinnemann was obsessed with the idea of what would dubbed as discordial or disc-shaped aircraft. He was convinced that having a disc-shaped aircraft with a wing design with an extremely low aspect ratio would allow it to fly at very low speeds. Zinnemann had commenced with this research into the concept in 1933 and eventually filed a design patent in 1935, granted by February 14th, 1938. However, the agency behind him, the NACA, decided it wasn't prepared to invest in the crazy design, so Zinnemann thought that it would be best to venture into the private sector to pursue it further, with full blessing from the NACA. It was this exact pitch that won him the chance to build a prototype with Chance Vought pun not intended, a respectable manufacturer that dated way back to 1917 and which by early 1940s was an independent division of the United Aircraft and Transport Corporation of America. It was actually rather ironic because Chance Ford had always been pretty conservative during this era, yet the division decided to invest heavily into Zinnemann's unique concept. Vought had been awarded a contract by the United States Navy in May 1940 to build this slow plane for carrier operations. By early 1942, the United States was actively involved in World War II, and so the Navy demanded that the plane be able to do very short distance takeoffs from tankers, capital ships, and the decks of aircraft carriers in order to counter the threat posed by Japanese aircraft in the Pacific War arena. And you've got to remember that the United States had just been attacked by the Japanese at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, so they were definitely looking for a way to counter the threat of this new Asian menace. The Pressure was certainly on Zinnemann and his team to deliver on this radical, new, slow plane concept. Although commissioned in 1940, and even with all the immense pressure being applied by the US Navy, the first test flight of the Vought 173 was only by November 1942. The prototype weighed in at 2,000 pounds, or, or just over a metric ton, with a length of 26.8 feet or 8.1 meters. But boy was this thing slow. The flying pancake could only achieve a maximum speed of 138 miles or 222 kilometers per hour. Its rate of climb was somewhat troublesome at 5,000 feet in seven minutes. The plane was clearly neither fast or high flying, but it was nimble in its takeoff and landing capabilities, and that was already at the height of advantage at World War II. Early tests were done by Vought's chance own respected test pilots, Booney Guyton and Richard Burroughs. Guyton had been the first to test it in November 1942 and found it generally responsive as an aircraft, even when encountering difficulties with stability during landing, for example. But that was only the tip of the iceberg with the aircraft. In particular, the aircraft was found to have an overly complicated gearbox that had the habit of routing power from the engines to its two long propeller shafts, creating unbearable amounts of vibration. 
Guyton, the inaugural test pilot, also found that the cockpit design was very poor and very uncomfortable. It also provided the pilot with limited to no use for the bottom panels of the cockpit since the pilot was positioned too high to make a comfortable or safety use for them for takeoff or landing. So these pilots were hot, vibrating, and were as blind as a bat. Another test pilot of the plane was none other than the legendary transatlantic aviator and American icon, Charles Lindbergh, who conducted a couple of test flights. Testing found the V-173 could almost hover and had the ability to overcome forced landings, which included a nose-over crash during one test. In fact, that rollover occurred on a forced landing on a beach due to the pilot wanting to avoid two sunbathers lying on said sand. Even then, the airframe was so strong that the plane didn't sustain any significant damage and the pilot came out unscathed. With testing complete with the prototype, the US Navy decided to move forward with a more robust version called the Vought XF5U1. This production model got the famous nickname of the Flying Flapjack. It would feature an all-metal construction, making it five times heavier with new powerful engines to boot. This new power would mean less vibrations and more weight carrying capacity to install weapons, such as a combination of six M2 Browning 50 caliber machine guns, four M3 20 mm cannons, or two 1,000 or 450 kilogram bombs. Although obviously not all at the same time. Other flaws such as the pilot's visibility would be amended. The engines would also fix the problem of its slow speed, allowing the plane to reach up to 452 miles per hour or 727 kilometers per hour. They would also be able to shift their center of lift up and down to help the aircraft get into the sky even faster, not unlike a helicopter rotor. Thankfully, this version also had an ejection seat installed to allow the pilot to escape those long, sharp rotors. The prototype was constructed and did a very brief period of testing on the runway, but never, apart from a few hops, got into the sky. The vibration was still a major problem and there were concerns that it could never be solved. Alas, at that very same airport, there was also a new type of fighter plane being tested. One with an engine that was so powerful, it would get a new nickname, the jet engine. The Flying Pancake would never enter mass production for the Second World War, as was the original intent. However, to its credit, the one full-size Flying Pancake prototype did go on to have a total of 190 test flights, with 131 hours of flight time between 1942 and early 1947, without any major incidences or any injuries to test pilots. That's a damn sight better statistics than even the most experimental prototype aircrafts. Even though it was never fully realized, the outcome of the Flying Pancake project would no doubt be considered satisfactory. Its unique flying characteristics were tried and proven. However, the rapid advancements in jet engine technology at the aftermath of World War II would result in the cancellation of the Vought 173 project by 1947, with the last test flight on March 31st of that year. Propeller-operated experimental aircraft simply weren't required as the Cold War ramped up and the focus became on fast turbojet technology. The all-metal production model, the XF5U, was destroyed and they had to use a wrecking ball as hand tools were unable to break it down. Credit to the original engineers of the time. As for the original V-173 prototype, it would be acquired by the Smithsonian Museum in 1960, finally getting the restoration that it deserved by the Volunteer Vought Aircraft Heritage Foundation many years later, a process completed in 2012. Today, you can find it at the Frontiers of Flight Museum in Dallas, Texas. There are two fascinating bits of trivia about the Vought V-173 that I would love to just say. That Charles Lindbergh did test the plane and he found it to be very responsive and a great plane to fly. The second piece of trivia is probably not at all surprising. It's believed that the Flying Pancake was also responsible for several UFO sightings by the general public throughout the 1940s. Imagine a flying disc-shaped aircraft in the sky being confused with a UFO. And it even leads us to wonder if the reason why Zinnemann was so obsessed with circular disc-shaped aircraft that could fly slow or even hover was perhaps he had some 
unworldly inspiration. And if you're looking for inspiration on your social media, then why not follow Found and Explained on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, TikTok, because we all have to join that platform now. You can jump on and you can see behind the scenes clips, high quality models, and find out more. And we also have a Discord where you can come and meet other fans of the show, chat with me, and also make suggestions of future ideas. And lastly, if that's not enough, you can join the Found and Explained family by becoming a channel member or becoming a Patreon. Part of the advantage of this is that you get to see videos early, chat with me directly in the VIP lounge, and also suggest topics that I'll make. So why don't you come and check that out in the links in the description. Thanks again so much for watching. Oh,